you sent us ahead of this conversation. You, you, you're taking a long view on yes, it. Sent, no. <laughs> sent us the U.S. Treasury chart for the past ten, yeah. well, for the ten year, for more than ten years, 17, yes. 1979 to yes. 2018, testing some of our memories a little bit here, Peter. But, but what, you can't are you making... possibly have born anywhere near that. Oh, you're point. too kind. Are you making the point that the, the the yield has to go back down again, or that it's breaking out of this this trend, or? If you could draw the line five years back and say it keeps happening, couldn't you? I think the point I've tried to make is I hope you enjoyed the bull market. Um, maybe and that's very anomalous. That 15-year period we had in the 70s and 80s against 100 years, we're now back to normality, which has been a rates of between two and five. That's much more typical. So um, the breakout could simply reflect, I continue to think it reflects an economy operating at full capacity with all the reasons of why Amazon and CPI pricing means that maybe CPI doesn't reflect all of those things. But it is that productive capacity issue that is at hand and logically you would expect the next thing and PPI yesterday was interesting in the US to reflect a higher not lower set of price points and I think all the Fed said yesterday was we're probably going to have to respond to that. Peter uh, you know the business cycle is pretty long in the tooth here and um, the yield curve is yeah. flattening out almost completely um, eventually <laughs> yeah. Recessions happen, right? Do you think the Fed will try and get ahead of this kind of wily e. coyote moment in 2019? Then, where do you see the terminal rate? Well, if you look at the seven months of data in the U.S. versus the previous seven months, you could argue we're already slowing, Matt. And I think you know that. And if you look at the globe, you're definitely slowing. I like this morning's headlines: China's retail sales and other things. But I don't know why anyone's surprised that it's all slowing down. Um, if you look at world trade volumes, if you look at South Korean exports, a great indicator. They're all pointing the wrong way. Um, Europe has... We, we've peaked. We peaked Q4 last year with an awful lot of animal spirits from the corporate sector suggesting there's going to be a big splurge by the consumers. It's not happening. Just to remind everybody, the US savings rate, the UK savings rate, as two economy examples, are on the floor. There's not much f fuel left to fire up this supposed wonderful global recovery. Mm. And I would argue last year China did have the same ratio as the US in 07. And five pounds, five five dollars of debt for one dollar of growth. I mean, this, you know, China's peaked. I don't. This means it collapses. But everything's about expectation. Global growth has peaked. The US is stronger than any other developed market, but it's operating at full capacity, as is most of Europe. Mm. Sorry to say it, that's the reality of the situation.